All of Us Strangers, a ghost story? Hi, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Courtney, you can call me Quartz, and I have just come from the cinema. I have just seen All of Us Strangers in the cinemas because there was so much buzz around this movie. There was so much Oscar buzz around this movie about whether or not it had been snubbed. So I had to see what all that buzz was about. Like this video, subscribe to my channel so I can quit my day jobs and I can give you the buzz full time. Drop me a comment if this is your first time to my channel because I'd love to give my new subscribers a proper welcome. With all that said and out of the way, let's get buzzing. All of Us Strangers follows screenwriter Adam, who is drawn back to his childhood home as he enters a fledging relationship with a mysterious neighbor. Soon after, he then discovers his parents to be living just as they were on the day that they died 30 years before. I did have to look up fledging, fledging referencing a bird flying from the nest, like a baby bird that Adam would be in this movie, flying from his nest and falling into love for the first time. Written and directed by Andrew Hay, starring Andrew Scott and Palmas Cull, All of Us Strangers is a ghost story with layers that defy easy explanations, but I am going to do my best. With themes of loneliness, cathartic healing, and longing, All of Us Strangers reminds us that we are all carrying baggage of our own regard. Watching this felt like peeking into the creative process of a writer, and I'm pretty sure the director has said this himself, if that viewers choose to view this movie as someone's personal creative process, that he would be fine with that also. Watching this felt like peeking into the creative process of a writer who has the power of stepping into portals just as Andrew Scott's character Adam does when visiting the ghosts of his deceased parents. Basically, the film follows Andrew, our main character, as he reflects upon as he reflects upon his past and how the grief and trauma and loss that he faces prevents him from finding love in the present day. But we are going to get into all the theories, okay? Hold your horses. Hold your hold 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 your horses. <laughs> We're gonna get into it. Fun fact that I found the childhood home used in the movie was actually that of director Andrew Hay, um, which is really cool. Adding that to the bucket list of things that I need to accomplish, which is filming in my childhood home. Yeah. Andrew Hay is known for his HBO show Looking and the queer drama Weekend. Director Andrew Hay actually put his own queer spin on All of Us Strangers by making the romantic leads male because the film is adapted from a book titled Strangers, which came out in 1987 by Taichi Yamada. So in the original text, the romance budding between the couple is portrayed through a straight couple. We'd love to see a director come in and adapt a story and make it their own while still maintaining the originality of the text. All of Us Strangers is both hopeful and healing. I feel like the whole time I was watching this movie, I was just thinking like, this is this must be so cathartic for the writer and for the actors. The main character, Adam, is unable to unpack all of the things unsaid between him and his parents before their untimely demise, giving him the opportunity to ultimately shed some of his own anguish and baggage as he experiences reconnecting with them again throughout the film. With their ghosts, I guess. High stated in an interview with Time Magazine, I was definitely wanting to explore and express how I feel about a certain generation of gay men. Basically my generation. Like how many queer men grew up in the 80s carrying the same grief and the same guilt that Scott portrays in the film. Even with people exploring their queerness today, there is still a sense of that shared experience from coming out to your parents to shouldering their off-kilter comment. And these moments had the audience laughing and giggling and we embraced the awkwardness of these scenes together, which was such a pleasure to experience. Telling it in the form of this strange ghost story about essentially what haunts us felt like the perfect way to explore a certain generation of people and what happened to us in the 80s and 90s, says director Andrew Hay. Andrew Scott has always been excellent, okay? If you have been sleeping on Andrew Scott, get up. Get up off the floor, put your phone down, hands off the wheel, okay? His caliber of acting has long gone underrated and I'm just so thrilled to see him being celebrated for his performance in All of Us Strangers. Director Andrew Hay said it best. I knew that with Andrew Scott, he had that vulnerability. We talked a lot about this idea of someone keeping all of this pain inside and then it finding ways to just leak to the surface. And as an actor, this is honestly something that we talk about all the time, which is ways, ways that you can portray emotion without letting it all leak out and burst from you. <laughs> because there's so much more power and um, humanity in like capping your feelings and holding back tears. And that's what we most often do rather than just like letting it all flow. Countless moments throughout the film where I was in awe of Andrew Scott's ability to just be so human, vulnerable while still capping and covering his feelings that simmer just beneath this mask that we often wear for other people. 
But ever so often, he would give us like a single tear that managed to break from the surface. His natural ability to speak with so many things simmering be below the surface. If you want to binge some Andrew Scott, you got to start with BBC Sherlock. He plays the villain, he plays Moriarty. It's excellent, chef's kiss. I remembered him from that. He did one episode of Black Mirror, I think. You probably know him as the hot priest from Fleabag. Delicious, delightful, charming, excellent storytelling. Hands off the wheel, get up off the floor, put the phone down <laughs> and go binge Fleabag. <laughs> but definitely, definitely he's probably most known for his role in Fleabag, which is just another outstanding and complex performance from him. Uh, I, I personally cannot speak much to Paul Mescal. This is the first time I've seen him on screen. Um, he has a wonderful talent. Definitely he has, he shares that ability with Andrew Scott in being human and real and, um, adding layers and depth to a character. I'm probably gonna have to go and binge normal people because I've been told to multiple times, but also because I'm eager to see what else his range is capable of. Director Andrew Hay said, it's the desperate act of longing to connect with someone that brings Adam's parents back into existence. So with the moment that he rejects Harry closing the apartment door, he's forced to face the subconscious longing that needs to be addressed in order for him to move forward in his life. I think because it's the first time in a long time that someone has attempted to court him romantically that all of these feelings are being brought back up and he's able to experience these conversations with his parents, the ghosts of his parents. What I enjoyed most about this film is that it crosses over between paternal and platonic love, highlighting to the audience that which is most important, which is finding love in whatever capacity you desire and allowing yourself to experience it. So Harry is the catalyst for Adam to address the most devastating loss that he's experienced and uncover a hidden part within himself. Harry is the catalyst for Adam to address his most devastating loss in life, essentially uncovering hidden parts of himself, the things and the feelings that he wishes he could have expressed to his parents. So each time that he visits his childhood home, he is able to express and unpack some of his heaviest baggage. Whether they are ghosts or products of Adam's imagination, is definitely up to the audience for interpretation. I certainly left the cinema wondering if he had been writing these scenes instead of actually going to the house to experience them. I think that's a really plausible option as well. What isn't up for interpretation though, is what happens to Paul Mescal at the end of the movie, yeah? Um, his character, Harry. It is unveiled during the emotional finale after Adam has said his final goodbyes to his parents, realizing that he's become all consumed in their ghostly reality. He makes peace with their deaths and finally moves on. Adam then visits Harry in his apartment for the first time, only to find his dead body waiting to be discovered. Essentially revealing the dead all along trope in the most devastating way possible. This immediately for me felt like a nod to the 1980 movie Ghost with Demi Moore and um, Patrick Swayze. Everything that had led up to that moment felt like felt like it fell into the same vein as that movie. It is then after the discovery of Harry's body that his ghost appears to Adam as he realizes that he is actually dead himself saying, I'm in there, aren't I? But most soul crushingly, why didn't anyone find me? When he said that, I was like, oh. Honestly, wish we had more of his backstory. I wish we knew more about Harry. I feel like that final moment, like the moment where he realizes he's dead would have hit a little bit harder. Not that it didn't hit hard, but just a little bit harder. He begins to melt completely at the realization of his own passing, and then they head up to Adam's apartment where the movie ends. The audience is clued into his death, like when exactly the death occurred, by visual cue of the whiskey bottle that he initially offered Adam that first night when he attempted to cruise Adam at his apartment. We realize that he was just as shattered and lonely as Adam had been when he mentions the terror that he felt in being alone that final night. night. He inevitably drinks and drugs himself to death in an accidental overdose. Audiences um, have been speculating that Harry never really existed, Paul Mescal's character never really existed, and that it was just another product of Adam's imagination all along. I prefer the first theory in thinking that Adam has a supernatural gift of speaking to the dead and it's powered by this aching burn for love that he has in his heart, <laughs> but to each their own. Audiences also speculate that Adam himself was dead all along, 
or that he ended his own life after the discovery of Harry's body. With the last scene fading out into starlight, I am kind of inclined to agree with that. I could see that definitely being possible. I think after the devastating loss of losing your parents twice, like first when they initially died in the car crash and then saying the final goodbye to their ghosts and then returning home to your lover just to find their dead body. I think that could drive Adam to ending his own life as a way of finding his own inner peace. Or you can choose to see the movie as a crazy fever dream of regrets, trauma, and loneliness that has been channeled by Adam into his script. He really was imagining everything and he just wrote it down and he has written this movie that we've just watched basically. But ultimately it's really not important whatever you decide, if it was real or not, because the message stands in reaching deep within yourself, moving past every hurt we've ever experienced and choosing love every time. Whether it was a dream, whether it was real, when you wake up from a dream, whether you're screaming, crying, laughing, you don't always remember exactly what happened in the dream, but you often recall exactly how it made you feel. And that is exactly what All of Us Strangers has accomplished. This entire movie is a love letter reminding audiences that it's okay to not be okay as long as you keep searching for love long after it has vanished and whether that's with your friends, your family, your significant other. Andrew Hay is an expert in showing audiences rather than telling them. Each piece of dialogue in this movie was met with depth and purpose. We laughed, we cried, we grieved with his characters and it's really refreshing to see a story with queer elements that weren't relied upon as the driving force for every plot point but rather integral pieces of the character. The performances were outstanding, the cinematography was well cultivated with purpose and intent. I really enjoyed this one. I probably would not have gone to see it in cinemas myself had it not been for the buzz, but be sure to catch all of us strangers in cinemas while you still can because it's definitely one to be seen on screen. Those are all my thoughts squished into this video, but thank you for joining me. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on my other social platforms if you want to see what else I like to yap about. You can always catch me on the weekends at 11 11 and i cannot wait to see you in the next one thank you so much for being here bye Love you.